Only and my cousin one Arthur Mike Bride as we went walking down by the seaside. Hello and welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're working our way through the puzzles from the grand final of the Time Sudoku Championship for 2017. Uh, this is the third puzzle on screen at the moment, um, so if you're watching this I guess you, you know the score. Um, only comment I make when I initially look at this grid is it seems to have a lot of numbers already in it. This seems quite a generous grid. and I, I actually don't like this, this sort of starting grid position because when you see complete um, uh, column fills like this 137 here, you know, it just feels like you're going to have to do so much work to try and identify hidden singles that might be in any of these six cells and things like that. But but we'll see. Firstly, I'm going to put in the obvious ones, then we'll go from there. Okay, well, I've got pretty lucky because I started to look at this box um, and I've managed to tie a four and an eight in at the bottom here, which means five nine needs to appear in the other two open cells in column seven. And nine can't be here, so um, that's going to be a five, and that's going to be a nine. And that might be quite quite useful. You can see immediately one, three, seven to place here. Uh, can't quite do that yet, but we'll put the threes in. Just looking at the bottom bottom row now. Now the three can only appear in this cell. Okay, so we've got five, seven combination here. So this cell, this 3x3 box in the bottom right hand corner is already extremely um, constrained. We've got 1, 2, 6 to place. You can see the 6 can go straight in. Um, 1 and 2 we can't place just yet. But wow, that's, uh, that's a good start. You can see now that also that the, the 9 can only appear actually in this cell in row 4. So, I mean, that's, that's also helpful because we can fill in the four as well. So nine, four, seven, nine, four, three. Okay. And then all nines can go in. The central nine is fixed here. This nine is fixed here. Um, and that means this must be a nine. Uh, this one, sorry, must be a nine. Three, five, seven again to place in. In this row, but still can't quite see how to fill them in. Oh, and actually, there's the thing we can do with some of the threes. I was looking for that um, because we had sort of, we've sort of got some locked three positions already. And look at the three in row eight. So three in row eight is forcing a three in one of these two cells. And then we can use this sort of um, restricted pattern now, where we have two threes in this position in the central box, and these two threes here in the bottom box. We can then say, therefore say there cannot be a 3 either here, here, here or here in the top central box. That means the 3 in the top central box is in one of these two positions. And then we can do exactly the same trick using the two 3's up here again. So, you know, the configuration of 3's will be in an X form in the row 1 and 2. It'll either be here and here or here and here. So the 3's in the first 3x3 three three box have to be here or here, well they can't be here, so that's a 3, which is a nice little logic chain, chain we found there. So we've still got to fill in 5, 7, we can't see quite how to do that still, but, uh, okay, blimey, I mean this, um, this is going very well. So now I looked at 8, just because I could see I could restrict the 8 in this box, and then you can also see the two gives it an identical pattern to the open squares there. Um, so now we're looking for uh, what are we looking for? One five six. Is that what's missing now? I think so. Um, let's put the ones in. Maybe that will give us something. Not quite. Six is in. It's the fives left to place. Oh, okay, and we can do uh, we can do another of these little tricks here. So we can see that in this box here, the five is in either this position, this position, or this position. Just immediately scan down to this bottom box. The five is it's in the central two columns again, so that the, the five can only appear in one of these two cells. And we've already got a five here, so this is this cell is a five, 
and look, that's going to give us a 5 there. Oh, look, it's all going to flow now. 5. And that's got to be a 3. This has got to be a 5. these two positions. Still need to put a 4, 7 in here. You can't see how that's going to work quite yet. Eight here and also for 7. Three, 8, 4 in one of these positions. This is going to be 6, 7. Oh, in fact, we can put a 3 in the bottom. I haven't spotted that. Silly. Which means this is a six. You should be able to see again here that this puzzle has a, a sort of recurring theme in it because. Um, We've got sevens in the central or the mid central box, box B, three by three. Here we know the seven, we don't know where it is, but the seven is in the same two rows of this three by three box. So the seven's got to be in the bottom row of the first three by three box, which means it must be here. So let's put that in. Which means this is a seven, this is a five. This is a four, four, eight, eight, seven, and you can see I think that the, the puzzle is is now solved. There isn't going to be anything complicated from here. So um, with that, I think we'll stop and we'll we'll have music. I mean, this puzzle I think would have taken had you alighted on the method that that I showed you and were lucky enough to start in the right place. I think this could have been done in three minutes, um, which is um, uh, pretty remarkable. Um, so definitely an opportunity for the finalists to really um, to really bash out puzzle very very fast. Um, and also I think um, a puzzle that showed off Tom Schneider's method um, in its best light because you know it was that method that really allowed you to crack it quickly. So I'll do the final puzzle probably tomorrow, and um, we'll see you again for that. Thanks for watching. And then Arthur and I, we soon drew our hearts and we scarce gave them time for to draw their own blades when a trusty shillelagh came over their heads and bade them take that as their warning. And their old rusty rebuse that hung by their side, we flung them as far as we could. Now take them out, devils, cried Arthur McBride, and temper the rage in the morning. And the little wee drummer, we flattened his pal, and we made a football of his rowdy dodo. Threw it in the tide, for to rock and to roll, and bad the tedious returning. And we haven't no money, paid them off in cracks And we paid no respect to their two bloody backs For we lathered them there like a pair of wet sacks And left them for dead in the morning